welcome everyone to the final installment of uh, oscilloscopes for beginners in this video what we're going to be looking at is the triggering on an oscilloscope now if you all recall the oscilloscope that I will be focusing on in this series is that TDS from uh, TDS 1002 B from Tektronix and on my oscilloscope if you look to the right side over here you'll notice that my triggering related uh, items are on this side and i also have an area down here at the bottom that says ext trig which is also part of the triggering function within an, an oscilloscope now as you know this is a digital oscilloscope if we look back at, let's say, an old school analog oscilloscope, it also has uh, triggering related items on here. And so if you look down here in the lower uh, right area, you'll see that the triggering information is here. And then also it has an area for that EXT trig, which is really the external trigger. So whether you're using the old school analog uh, oscilloscope, pardon me, or you're using a new school digital oscilloscope, both have um, the triggering section on there. And the trigger is the reason that's there because it's actually an important function that we kind of glossed over in some of the previous episodes. So again, in this episode, we're gonna talk about that. All right, so in order to understand what exactly the triggering is on the oscilloscope or what it, uh, what it does, okay, first we have to understand how oscilloscopes acquire uh, data, okay? So on the screen, we have a signal that's being fed into an oscilloscope. And let's just pretend that this signal begins here. Remember when it comes to, to what we're looking at on oscilloscopes, remember it's time information on my x-axis and my voltage on the y-axis. All right. So if we look at this signal here, what happens is this signal begins at let's say time equals zero and it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on forever. Now it is totally impossible for your oscilloscope to print an infinite amount of data on the screen all at once. Now, because that is the case, what the oscilloscope does is the oscilloscope grabs a portion of that information and it shows it on the screen. And so in here in this square box, this represents what you would see on uh, the digital oscilloscope screen or even an analog oscilloscope screen. Now, the thing is, what if that signal changes? And let's say rather being, let's say, for example, if it was uh, one kilohertz signal being fed into the oscilloscope, let's say it became two kilohertz that was being fed into the oscilloscope. You don't want to continue looking at this old information here. You want the oscilloscope to reflect the new data that's being fed into that specific channel that you're actually looking at. So because that is the case, okay, um, what the oscilloscope has to do is it actually has to go out and grab a fresh screen of the uh, of the signals that's being fed in. Now, if that's being if that's done incorrectly, when it actually goes back and grabs that second screen, okay, as shown here, what it's going to do is it's going to superimpose that screen over the, the what was originally there. And so what ends up happening is you have something that does not look like a signal at all. So in this case that's being shown here, it's the same signal, but it's taking that second screen and it's superimposing it over the first screen. And as you can see in terms of where it began, so this signal here began up here, whereas this signal began over here on the first screen and second screen. So again, what's gonna happen is the two signals are gonna look different. And so sometimes what you can get is you can get a signal that kind of looks unstable on the screen, which makes it very difficult for you to analyze that signal. What you actually want is you actually want that same signal, again, if, you're, if you haven't adjusted 
the uh, voltage or if you haven't adjusted the uh, signal that's being put into the uh, oscilloscope, you want that same signal to be shown on the screen every single time. And what that allows for you to do is, it allows for you to analyze the signal that's actually being fed into the oscilloscope. So in order to make this possible, you want when the new screen is captured and posted to the oscilloscope's display, okay, you want it to begin at the same position and have the same signal so you can then analyze. So on here, you'll notice that both signals began at approximately here, okay? And both signals ended at approximately here, all right? So when that's the case, it doesn't look like the signal is moving at all. It looks like the signal is stable on the screen. Now, how do you actually go about doing that? Or how does the oscilloscope go about doing that? Well, in order for the oscilloscope to do that, it has to have a way in order to synchronize you know the signals that are coming in okay and what it does is it creates for the lack of a better term right now it creates a synchronizing point and so on a digital oscilloscope let's say for instance this is the area where you're you've decided you want your oscilloscope to try to synchronize the different screens that are captured what happens is the oscilloscope says okay well, I'm going to synchronize in this area. And not only does it have to look at the voltage and, and, and match that voltage from over here with the voltage that's over here, it also has to match whether the signal is actually falling or rising. So in the case of the two signals that's being shown in these two screens, what happens is the signal here is actually falling and the signal here is falling and in both cases, it matches it up at these two points, okay? And so if that happens, then what happens again is both signals or every time the oscilloscope goes out and captures a new image or a, a, a part of that signal, it looks like the signal has not moved and you can actually go through and analyze it. So what we're gonna do now is now let's look at this being done on an actual oscilloscope and we'll talk about how you go about actually doing um, making sure that the signal looks the same and the way that we go about doing that is by using that edge triggering or that triggering that we talked about at the beginning All right, so here's my actual setup for my oscilloscope, which is connected to my function generator. My function generator is feeding a 24 kilohertz signal into channel one of my oscilloscope, okay? My oscilloscope currently has the soft menus for channel one shown here. Now, we're not focusing on the soft keys for channel one. What we wanna focus on is how the uh, trigger the triggering area actually works over here. So if I move the triggering knob here and I just turn it, look at what happens at the screen. What you'll notice is that there's an arrow that's actually over here that's moving up and down, all right? And also you'll notice that the wave is moving left and right based on how I turn that triggering knob. Now. The triggering knob, if you look here, what it says is triggering level. And as I'm changing that, you'll notice also that the voltage here, this voltage uh, information here, is changing for channel one. What that actually is, is a threshold that's being set. So I'm, I'm actually setting a threshold inside or for the oscilloscope, okay? And so currently the threshold is zero volts. So what it's saying is, I'm telling the oscilloscope that I want it to trigger, meaning I want it to go and reset the image when the center area here, according to where this arrow is, I want it to reset when the voltage is zero, okay? And also not only when it's zero, but when it's a falling edge zero. And that's what, that, that's what the uh, symbol here means. It's actually a falling edge. If I go to my triggering menu, you'll notice that it also says that here that the slope is falling edge, okay? And up here also it says the type of trigger I'm actually doing is edge. 
So by the way, I should mention this, that edge triggering is probably what you're going to use 99% of the times according to the type of job you have. Okay. Edge triggering is the most uh, common one. And since we're dealing with beginners, we're only going to be talking about edge triggering in this video. All right. So again, we're doing edge triggering. The type of edge we're looking for is a falling edge. So what it means is that as the signal passes through here, I want it to refresh the screen when it gets to a signal that has zero volts and it's falling in that middle area right there. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, you'll notice that it says that the signal that I'm actually going to be triggering off of is going to be whatever signal is coming into channels one. Okay. Whatever signal is coming into channel one. So again, if I turn this, you'll notice now that like, for instance, uh, when I go here and one more, it says that the signal should trigger or the oscilloscope should trigger on one volt and it should be falling it. So if you look right here down the center, based on where this arrow is, honestly, you'll notice that the signal is one volt at that point with it falling. And so again, by doing that, what it makes possible is that every time the screen refreshes, it makes sure that that happens. And if that's the case with a cyclical signal, then the, the signal will always look the same on the screen. All right, so let's say I wanted to set a threshold of one volt, but instead of the oscilloscope refreshing at one volt when the slope is falling, let's say I wanted it to be right raising or rising. Okay. What I can do here is I can change this from being fa falling to rising and look at what happens to the signal. You'll notice now that the signal actually, when it, when it refreshes on the screen, what it does is the signal passing through the center here. And again, remember it's based on where this arrow is at the top. When it passes through that center, okay, what happens is it checks for one volt. If it gets one volt there and it's actually rising, then it uses that as a way to synchronize the screen. And so that's what you can see here on the screen. If we now move this to zero volts rising edge, okay, zero volts rising edge, you'll notice that the signal down the center again, based on our arrow at the top here, the signal down the center, what happens is anytime the signal is rising and it's at zero volts, the oscilloscope can use that to help to synchronize the current image that's going to be posted on the screen versus what was posted before. All right. So what if I end up setting that triggering level, which is currently at zero volts? Okay. What if I end up setting it larger or smaller than the signal uh, amplitude? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to adjust the triggering level so that it's larger than the voltage peak here. And you'll notice once I do that, the signal now becomes unstable on the screen. Okay. And if I move just below the amplitude, you'll notice that it becomes stable again. Now, caution. I would suggest that you move below the, the amplitudes that are shown on the screen. Cause what happens is whenever you have a signal, there's always noise on there. And so if you set close to the, uh, the voltage peak, the highest amplitude, what happens is as the noise changes, the signal will become unstable on the screen. So again, whenever you're setting this up, make sure you actually go just slightly below somewhere between slightly below the maximum amplitude or slightly above the minimum amplitude. Cause same thing can happen down here. If you go too far with the triggering level. All right. So sometimes we actually want to trigger 
off of some external source that's not coming into channel one or channel two. If you remember correctly, the previous examples, I was triggering off of channel one. So in this case, in this example, what I'm do, going to do is trigger off a channel, uh, for, pardon me, I'm going to trigger off an external source, and that external source is going to be channel two, actually, from my function generator. And as you can see here, channel two, and actually I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Channel two here. There we go. Channel two actually is a two kilohertz uh, signal, and by the way, it's a square wave um, that we're going to input. It has a four volt peak to peak, and again, that's going to be exiting out of channel two of the function generator, and it's going to go into the external trigger for the oscilloscope all right so if that's the case what we're going to do since we're triggering on channel two of the function generator which is going into the external trigger we're going to go ahead and change to the trigger menu and instead of it triggering off of channel one what we're going to do is trigger off that external signal so i'm going to go ahead and change it to ext and as you can see now it's triggering and according to this, off the external signal, it's looking for a rising edge. Whenever it gets a rising edge, it's a square wave. And again, it's edge because that's the type of triggering we're going to do or that you're most likely going to end up doing. Okay. And so now you can see that the signal is actually stable here uh, based on that input. So those are two different examples that we showed on how to... Um, trigger our function generator so that it shows our stabilized um, signal on the screen so that we can actually analyze it.